Hello, listeners out of Radio Land. Again, this is Pastor George Crowd, Word of Faith International Ministry. So many people call in, write in, and what have you. I have a couple of announcements before we get started here. Uh, Sewing Circle Artistic Fingers, First Jurisdiction of Southern California, Hale Morris Lewis Manor, uh, 1307 West 105th Street, Los Angeles, California. As the word of God speaks, let the church say amen. That's a, that's a great thing. Tea and fashion show, Saturday, March the 19th, 2016, 3 p.m. Round table discussion, uh, Elder Bishop Prentice Parker, Evangelist, Missionary Karen Cox, Bishop R.M. Gibson, and Lady Levette Gibson, Mother Sue Maku. And by the way, my good friend, in Long Beach, uh, Bishop Joel E. Prelude. But don't forget that. It's Saturday, March the 19th, 2016, uh, 3 p.m. Don't forget that now. Don't, and uh, more information, you contact the president, uh, Sister Deborah or Bondaroff. Call her, please. God bless you. And also have another one. We got something kind of mixed up last time. A uh, young man was here, was an inventor. Uh, I believe his name is Johnson, Dr. Johnson. The name of the organization that we'll be speaking then is called FEMA Choice. And this organization gives teenagers a choice to protect themselves for accidental pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy without taking birth control. That's, 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 that's all right, isn't it? Now, I'm, for more information, I can tell you exactly how you can contact these people. Uh, Dr. Winston Jones from Choice CEO, you can call them 888-975-6745, uh, extension 102, you, for the film choices. And so thank God for that announcement. We're going to move right along here and get started here. Now, <coughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, God, for just touching so many people out in the radio land and touching people in the hospital. And thank you for answering prayers that people, if you had me to pray for, uh, they were sick, but they healed through faith. And God, I just thank you for that. Amen. God bless you. Amen, we're going <clears> to <throat> move along here. I have a, a fantastic young man here with me, a good friend of mine. And I'm going to give you a little background on him. This young man can play just about any kind of instrument. Uh, he played with earth, wind, and fire. Played with uh, who else? Denise Williams. Denise Williams. Lou Ross. Lou Ross. Lenny and Williams. Just, Lenny, name, just to name a few. And just keep on going. But guess what? He's focusing on the Lord now. Amen. He's at Greater Berean Baptist Church over there with our pastor, uh, Pastor Joe B. Smith. That's yeah. my that's my godson too. <laughs> uh, what's that address over there? 
That's 12433 South Main. 12433 South Main, in mm -hmm. case of y'all listening now. But we're going to move right along. Brother Eric is over here. Yes. And guess what? We're going to sing a song <coughs> for you later on. <laughs> but we're going to get off into this word right now. Then we'll get over to a, a song. Praise Amen. be to God. Well, we're going to talk about the faithfulness of God. So would you please uh, go to Genesis my brother Eric, start off at Genesis, I think it is third chapter, isn't it? 37? No, Genesis. Genesis, the 37th chapter? Yeah. Okay. Genesis, the 37th chapter, verse 1. It's the word of God. It says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph's, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with his sons of Bela and with the sons of Alpha, <coughs> his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. Hold it right there. Now, that's what jealousy uh, do for you. Yes, yes. And too often, people will let the jealousy uh, get them down. To the point where they start hating. Exactly. Yeah, I mean. See, when je jealousy does lead to hate, if yes, you don't it correct it very quickly. Amen. Amen. Keep going, please. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Hold, hold it right there. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. When God has blessed someone that's anointed, that is gifted, and you find that right now, uh, Brother Eric, in uh -huh. the churches, right yeah. now. and uh, Today. <clears throat> today. And I'm not going to call no church name. I know mm -hmm. this uh, musician there, he can play real good. Uh -huh. He can sing real good. And there's so many people is so jealous of him. But so you ought to be grateful, whatever talent God has given you, use it. Yes. And too often people want to get out of their lane. You know, uh, a lot of people say, well, I can sing soprano, I can sing this, and I can sing that. You, uh, certain people's voice is not meant for that. And you can say, I can sing every song anybody else can sing. No, you can't either. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a prime example. For instance, uh, when you was playing in the world segment, uh -huh. a lot of those people <clears throat> couldn't sing other people's stuff. Right. <clears throat> because they wasn't used to it. And it that's didn't why. It fit their voice. Mm hmm. It didn't fit. And, and just because you have a good voice, that don't mean you can sing everybody's song. Absolutely. That's correct. And read on a little more. Okay, we had verse 6 of chapter 37 of Genesis. It <coughs> says, And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, <coughs> my chef rose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my chef. Now, <coughs> let's get back to where we were. Now, out of all the things that Joseph went through. He was a very young lad, what, 17 years old, I believe that's what they say, 17 years 17 old. 17 years old, uh-huh. Now, his brothers were so jealous of him, they dug a hole mm. for him to fall out into a hole and went back and told his parents that a beast ate his brother. They took the court and killed something and sprinkled blood all over it. And, uh, that was his birthright. See, let me say this right here. Just because you are children of a holy person, a pastor or what have you, that there's somebody in this group God going to have picked out, going to be more anointed than the rest of them. He may be the youngest one. You never know. And that's what happened to Joseph. Yeah. And you'll find a lot of that going on in the families right now. See, you know, 
Joseph was a dreamer. And they said, oh, here come this dreamer. But guess what? That same Joseph, he went down into the land of, of Egypt with Pharaoh. He was his right-hand man. He became. Yes, he, he became did. his right-hand man. And guess what? God allowed a drought to come down upon the, uh, the rest of Benjamin and all the rest of his brothers. And they came down there to get grain and didn't even recognize his own brother. And he was uh, Pharaoh's right-hand man. Now, watch how temptation can try to get into you. <clears throat> now, he was Pharaoh's right-hand man. And while he was down there, watch this now. While he was down there, his wife uh, m tried to get him to, to, to go to bed with her. He said, no, I can't do that. And she tore his shirt off his back and showed it to him. They put Joseph down in the prison with the rest of the guys. Yeah. Then later on, and he was interpreting all the dreams and stuff, then later on, Pharaoh realized, he recognized. That, recognized that his wife was lying. Mm -hmm. See, let me say this, a lie will, will get you killed. Many people is not here today because of lies. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Uh, especially the people doing back in the, in the slavery time. I, I, I think about that, in my, I read a lot about that, and that my heart goes out. So a lot of people's in the slavery. Leron, you wasn't even born then. He back in my time. All you have to do is say he did it. And they would frame you. But let me say this right here. You have to give an account. Ever since the world exists, even before Jesus' time, people going to have to give an account of everything that they have done. Everything. If you think you can do it and get away with it, even now, you have police officers and other people shooting people down just to have some gang members. You have ISIS. Everybody's shooting people down just to have something to do. But they don't realize when they leave this earth, they have a, a, another place to go. Hades is hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hades is hell, according to just the Greek word for hell, is Hades. And people have to realize that we're going to play a little song here. We're still having a good time. We're going to play Amen. another little song, and we're going to... Keep on rolling. And guess what? By the way, before you click me off, now we, uh, Brother Eric and I are going to sing a little song later on, too. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Book of Revelation, uh -huh. chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. Yes, sir. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more. Preach, preacher. For God shall wipe away. Yes, sir. Every tear from their eye. Yes, sir. Get ready for the revolution. Come on. Come on. What you say? Trump is on the sky, cracks the last, the first, the 
first to last and won't pass. So don't be caught slipping, brother. Don't be tripping, bro. Cause when I see him, I'm giving really good. They say we move too much. We do too much. And if you step against us, then you lose too much. Ain't no stopping what we doing when the spirit is moving. Don't be hating what I'm doing when I'm the vessel he's using. Everywhere I be, they try to judge me. They try to shake me. They try to buzz me. But they can't break me cause I'm down with Christ. Dog child, a new nation never feel alright. I tell you, revolution, uh, 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 Kirk Franklin getting down on that revolution. I think that's a nice beat. The young people are very often into that. Yeah. Amen. So we're having a good time. We're talking about, uh, uh, what are we talking about, Brother Eric? We're talking, talking about Joseph. We're talking about the faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay, faithfulness. go ahead on down with it. What, where, where are we? Well, let's go over here to, verse, to chapter 42. Uh -huh. When uh, Joseph, well, before that, we want to talk about when he was made ruler over Egypt? Yes. Just a little bit of that. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto the servants, can we find such a one that is, find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? The, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God hath showed thee all these, all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in, to, only in the throne will <clears throat> I be greater than thou. Okay, wow. now we begin to read the whole story of Joseph. Uh -huh. Joseph was a dreamer. But guess what? You have to be careful who you treat wrong because that same person one day may have to pick you up out of the gully. Amen. And, and God don't like uglies and not crazy about pretty either. Amen. And so when we think about what he went through, we're talking about uh, the faithfulness of God. And, and we begin to <clears throat> think over our lives what he has done for us. Think about it now. Just think about it. I know a lot of people have called me today that I prayed for some time ago, and uh, they're up moving about, and they're blessing from God. He's faithful. See, if you be, f listen at me good out here, saints. If you be faithful to God, he will be faithful to you by blessing you for whatever problem that you're going through. Now, now if you, a lot of people <clears throat> don't call on God until something started happening to them. You should call on God every day and thank him for yeah. his blessing. You know, thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his kindness. Thank him for what he has done for you. Thank him for giving his, most of all, thank him for giving his life for restless sinner like us. Amen. Had it not been for God, I tell you, whoo, he gave his only begotten son. Yes. The Bible says, whosoever believe in him, shall not perish, John 3, 16, but have what? Everlasting. everlasting life. And that's what we all are striving for, everlasting life. And when we begin to, <clears throat> to look at the situation and circumstances that's all around the world, all from place to place, oh, my God, we're going to do a little song here. What's the song, Brother Eric? Move. Move. Want to do it now? We ready? we ready. Let's go. My little guitar here. Tell him that sometime I want you. I want you to move. Please, Lord. Oh, Lord. 
I want you to move. I want you to move. Listen, I want you to move from man to man. And then I want you to move from heart to heart. Ah, Jesus. Right there, move. Move from church to church. You see, we don't get along in our churches no more. From church to church. We can't even get along in the choir. From church to church. Not only that, we can't get along in our home. From church to church. You ought to call God up and tell him I want you to move. From church to church. And then I want you to move. From house to house. And then move. From house to house. Move down in my heart right now. From house to house. Move from house to house. From house to house. And then I want you to move from man to man. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I want you to move. I want you to move. Yeah. I want you to move. Yeah. I want you to move. Can I get a witness? Stay right there. I want you to move. Can I get a witness right now? You to move. Go to the jailhouse. Somebody in the hospital. They need you right now. They need you right now. Somebody right now. Yeah. Yeah. On the hospital bed. Jailhouse. I need you to move right now. On the radio. Somebody needs you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to move. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. I want you to move. Church to church. Hallelujah. House to house. Heart to heart. Isn't that something? Somebody's heart needs fixing right now. I, I, I feel good. Yes, I feel the presence of the Lord is in this place right now. Yes, it is. Heart to heart. Some some people's heart so cold and stony mm. until if you see them down the street and go by them um, and say good morning, you know what they'll do? Moaning. <laughs> they take the good off and say moaning. Wow. It happens so many times. Yeah, and I tell people this, I uh, got this from Prez Blackman here. <laughs> Bless his heart. He, he's right on this show every Friday. Every day above ground is a good day. And that is absolutely true. If you don't think every day above ground is a good day, don't wake up. <laughs> 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 don't wake up. Oh, this is really, really, really getting good to me right now. Praise be to God. I thank God for Jesus and yes. thank God for all the friends that is there. Uh, when is this program that we have for at, at Greater Berean? It's the third Sunday of April. The third Sunday of April. April uh-huh. Greater Berean. What's that address? It's 12433. 12433 South Main. Yes. That's right off of Maine and El Segundo. You're yeah. going to see the male chorus, and you're going to see them perform very well. Amen. You will see me singing, and you will see a lot of other people singing. And I may get crazy and do some cooling water in there. Who, who, who knows that? Uh, you know, it, it depends. Uh, but we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed. And God I just thank God. We're going to move on about God faithfulness. God faithfulness. Numbers. Uh, we're going to Numbers. Numbers. Uh, two seven, hit numbers two seven, right numbers quick for me. Chapter two, verse seven. I'm sorry, number twelve, chapter twelve, verse seven. Hit chapter that for 12. me. Okay. Verse seven. Hit that for me. Move on to twelve. Verse seven. Yes. <clears throat> numbers chapter twelve and verse seven. Uh huh. The written word. My servant Moses uh -huh. is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in the dark speeches, and in the solitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, 
Then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was a leprous. Hallelujah. And Abram said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I behold thee. Lay not thy sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh has been consumed. Okay, we're talking about God's faithfulness. Look what God did for Moses. Uh, he had a test to do. That's when he was trying to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. Yeah. You know, sometimes God have a blessed blessing for us, and it takes forever to receive that blessing. You know why? Because of our faith and our faithfulness. See, people don't, a lot of people don't call on God until they need him, desperate, and desperation. They, that's when you can really, they can call on God then. But as long as they're doing good, they're not hurting uh, they have food on the table, place to stay, automobile to drive, you know. And a lot of people won't get up in the morning and thank God for that. See, people say, well, I already got my own house. Well, sure, but God bless you to get that house. You know, isn't this something some people go spend millions and millions of dollars for a house and don't get a chance to enjoy them because they health? See, if you're faithful to God, he will be faithful unto you, too. We're talking about God's faithfulness. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. When we begin to look at uh, God's faithfulness, that's, I mean, God is really faithful. Uh, he has been good to me. And when I look back over my life, I see the hills and the valleys that he brought me through and brought me over. And I'm a living testimony what God has done for me in my life. Praise be to God. We're going to play another quick song, and then we're going to get back into some more word here. Praise be to God. Amen.
about your works. About your works. Because I'm grateful. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful. Just to praise you, Lord. To praise you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, flowing from my heart. My God, my God, my God. Woo! I can listen to that song all day and all night because when I look back over my life, I see how far he has brought me down through the years and up to the present moment right now. I'm going to get Brother Eric to read uh, another scripture for me. That's Matthew uh, 11, 28 through 30. 28 through 30. Yes. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, Ooh. and my burden is light. My God, my God, Thank be you, faithful. Lord. Oh, that make me want to shout up Thank in this you, place here. <clears throat> They're talking about coming to me all that labor and all yeah. the heavy laden. See, those of you out there have so much problem, having so many problems, having so many trials and tribulations that's going through your life right now. Uh -huh. Jesus is saying, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. What? And lean on me. Mm -hmm. For I am meek and lowly heart. And you shall find rest unto thy soul, for my yoke is what? Easy. Easy. And my burden is what? Light. So that's where God is faithful. All you have to do is just call upon the name of Jesus, and then you will see how blessed you are too. Praise be to God. We're talking about the faithfulness of God. And too often in your lives, how many times you ever been, how many people out there have all, been near death so many times. The doctor walked away from your bed and shook his head and said, I can't do any more. That's when your faith should kick in. Mm -hmm. So the devil going to paint pictures to you. A lot of people say, well, I'm scared to go to the hospital. That's why God has blessed the physicians here to heal those problems through faith now. Don't leave faith out no time. Not a single time. Don't leave faith out. <clears throat> We're going to move right along here. We're going to go on down to uh, Lamentation. Can you kick, catch that, Brother Egg? Eric? Lamentations. Lamentations. And those of you, yes, you can call in right now and speak to me right now on the air, 323-965-1600. And if you do miss me, uh, you can pick me up on RMC Gospel. Dot com, Pastor George Kraut, Word of Faith International Ministry. Uh, that's on YouTube or whatever, how you get your Internet thing going. Make sure you do that. And I would appreciate it if you will call in right now about some of the faithful things that God has done for you in your life. Somebody may say, I can't think of them. Yes. You know what? When you wake up in the morning, that's another blessing Amen. that God has blessed you with. You got, got it, Brother Eric? What chapter is that? It's Lamentation, the uh, second chapter. And I'm going to start on 
verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassions fail not. Amen. Woo! God's compassion fail not. And matter of fact, the Bible tells us that heaven and earth are pass away before his word will. Heaven and earth will pass away before his word will. And we have to look at the faithfulness of God. And it says, they are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. That song just went off. That's my favorite song, Faithful yeah. Faithfulness. Oh, praise. I have a youth choir saying that. Oh, my God, the Lord is my protection, said my soul. Therefore, will I uh, hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. What? Did you hear that? The Lord is good to those who wait for the Lord. My God, my God. And it said to the uh, soul that seeketh him. You have to seek God. Seek God. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit in one place and expect God to come jump in your lap. It's not going to happen. You have to seek him. And you seek him, you sure can find him. He's just only a whisper away. <laughs> just only a whisper away. Oh, praise be to God. And in the good that a man should both have hope quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. See, too often people get impatient. Impatient. They don't wait upon the Lord. They try to do everything themselves. Then the first thing, when they get themselves in trouble, they begin to call them on the Lord. <laughs> it is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. Good for a man to bear the yoke of his youth. Don't wait you to get to be an old buzzard and try to do something. Do it while you're young. But God will accept you if, you if you're blessed enough to get old and turn your life around. He'll accept you. But the Bible tells us in your youth, my God, my God, why are you young? Give God to praise and honor and your days will be strengthened. Why you think it's so much drive-by shooting? Because they're living on the wrong side of life. You're not on the Lord's side. You need to get on the Lord's side and stay on the Lord's side. You young people, do you hear me now? I'm preaching to you now. You need to get on the Lord's side and stay on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need to get on the Lord's side and stay on the Lord's side. I tell you what, I, I get chills. Some of the things I hear the young, the profanity come out of their mouths. My goodness, my goodness. Saw a lady the other day and I spoke to her. That lady looked at me and said, you, you, she, matter of fact, she cursed me out. Well, she was one of them other kind that's not going to ever get to heaven. Just look like a man, dress like a man, mm -hmm. act like a man, and going straight to hell. So, you know, the Bible said, try the spirit by the spirit that you know is of God. I knew that was a, 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 a demonic spirit when I first saw it, but I, I'm nice. I speak to everybody. I speak to everybody. So, Brother Abel, can you read a little further on down there? Sure. Uh, can I just reiterate one thing? That yes. The crowd yes. That really touched my spirit here. Um, it, it says, this I recall to my mind. This is in uh, Lamentations, verse, chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 21. Mm -hmm. It says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Mm -hmm. Because his compassions fell if not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oof. That's what touched my spirit. Great is the faithfulness, faithfulness of the Lord in our behalf. For those, like you say, who seek him, mm -hmm. those who are, are, are hungry for mm -hmm. righteousness, the Lord is faithful for them. Uh -huh. Read on down a little further from 28 on down to 34. He sitteth along and keepeth silent because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. It is so, if so be there, may be hope. Uh -huh. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. Hold it right there. He giveth his cheek to them that smiteth him. Mm. Okay, now, you know what? When I was coming up a kid, I couldn't understand. Say, well, if somebody hit you on the left cheek, turn your right cheek. Mm. 
And you know what I would say? If he hit me on the left cheek, I'm going to hit him all upside the head and everywhere else I can put my fist on him. <laughs> but see, I didn't know no better then. Amen. But now since you are aware and understand what the God, word of God is trying to, is showing us, yes. then we, we won't think that way no more. Amen. You know? Paul said, when I was a child, I think as a child. I'm a man, I think as a man yeah, now. It is. And you have some people 30 and 40 years old still acting like a kid. Mm -hmm. I saw a man the other day. He was 50 years old, walking around his pants sag sagging. And I had, I looked, I, I said, face. excuse me, how you doing, sir? Oh, yeah, homeboy, I'm doing good. Oh, no, he didn't. I said, I'm not a homeboy. And I told him who I was. Well, you all you preachers going to hell anyway. I said, you're going to be the first one there. <laughs> they walk around here <laughs> trying to be young. Pants is hanging down. That's you unbelievable. 50-something <clears throat> years old. 50-something. Mm. Oh. Oh, no, he was an old dude. Two days older than dirt. <laughs> Walk, <laughs> walking around trying to be young. I tell you, these, stay in your place. Stay in your place. Stay in your place. Stay in your place. At your yeah. age. Yes, yes. Go, go ahead and read a little more, please. Verse 31. <clears throat> For the Lord will not cast off forever, but thou he could, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion, according to the multitude of his mercies. Okay, hold on. Now, let me say this. Just because God is good, Mm -hmm. If you sin, you're going to pay for that. You're gonna, you're gonna he's, still, he's still going to have compassion for you, but you're still going to reap what you are sowing. Amen. What you need to do is stop in the name of love and turn your life around. Show your neighbor a little love. Show your sister or brother a little love. Love will go all the way. Believe me. Okay. Verse 31, for he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men, to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, of the earth mm -hmm. to turn aside the right of, the, of a man before the face of the Most High, mm -hmm. to subvert a man in, in his cause, the Lord approveth not. Who he is, who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Who is he to say when the laws the Lord commanded he what? It 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 not. It not. Yeah. Okay, did you not know some of you you should know it. God can do anything he wants to do. The way he wanna do it, how he wants to do it, and we can't say nothing. And you know, this world is so sinful. God allow a lot of things to happen to get our attention, believe me. People think they're scot-free. Uh-uh. He going to send something through California, going to wake up. Even the devil going to jump up and run. An earthquake going to come through here, believe me. He, he, a tsunami. We need to wake up. We're just not here uh, because I've owned by the mercy and the grace of God is the reason why we're here now. And we should give God some of our time. We don't. The thing about it. I talked to a lot of my friends. I said, how often do you read? Oh, I pick up my Bible a couple of times a week. That's not enough. You should read your Bible daily. Every that should day. be your daily word every Man. day. Read your Bible daily. And then once you get into that word, Man. you're going to taste that word, and it's going to be sweet. Over in South, the old taste and see how sweet it is, as sweet as a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. No, a honeycomb is very sweet, isn't it? Yes, and it that's is. if you get into this word. I mean, sometime I've gotten up at 11 o'clock and read up to 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. I get revelation when I'm reading God with peace and quiet. Yes. And that's what we should be doing. Give God some of your time. Uh, people caught up in uh, what this old thing about this marriage, this thing on TV they just had. Uh, the bachelor and bachelorettes and all that stuff. That's worldly stuff. And, and, and I can't believe Christian people is caught up into that. I know some people caught up into that stuff. Now, you've slept with everybody you went over there, and, and you call your, oh, get out of here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my dog watch that. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting, he'd go to barking himself knowing he's, they, they wrong. So what we, we have to live righteously. We have to live Amen. holy every day. Not only just Sunday. You have some, some Sunday-go-meeting people. They're on a, uh, 
live right one day on Sunday. Then the rest of the week they do what they want to do. But see, God is a righteous God. He's an almighty God. Faithful. Faithfulness. Oh, my Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. We're going to play a little song here, and we're just going to keep on moving. Don't look like the, the callers are scared to call today. 323-965-1600. Call me. Talk to me. God bless you. I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. Yeah, I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. I'll tell you that I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. I tell you that I've seen. I wake up in the morning and I realize that, that I'm still here. That lets me know that God gave me favor no matter what circumstances reveal. He brought me through my pain and sorrow, reassured me I got hope for tomorrow. And grains. Oh no, if I just keep faith, I can win this race. I'll sing over to let the feet have the last word. I, I've seen, yes, I have to. Just can't let the feet have the last word. Mm. When I think of his goodness. And all he done for me Dare not complain Cause mm, he brought me over The rugged hill And all of my heartaches and pain Well I understand Trials come to make me strong Gotta stay in the race yo I gotta keep pressing on This is my testimony to you I got victory, even though I don't look like what I've been through. Ooh, I've seen too many victories. I just can't let defeat have the last word. Oh, I've, I've seen, seen too many victories. I can't let defeat have the last word. Listen, y'all, when I wake up in the morning, I count it victory. I get out of my I, I, I put one foot before the other. I counted victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I counted victory. victory. Yes, I did. I counted victory. Said I counted victory. Yes, I do. I counted victory. My peace of mind. My goodness yeah. gracious, and that's a Thank beautiful you. song. Uh, they did a remix on that, and the uh, William Brothers is doing real good with that song. I mean, it's jumping all over the place. Yes, it is. Hey, Amen. We're talking about the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of and, God. And uh, when we think about even when we're in our wrong, God still looks after us. Yes, he does. Why? Because 
If you wake up in the morning and look out and see another day, that's God's faithfulness. Yes. If you can put one foot before the others and walk, <laughs> that's God's faithfulness. I, I'm going to preach up in here a minute. Come on. <laughs> and then when you <clears throat> sit down at the table, mm -hmm. he has prepared food for you at the table. And I told one guy, I said, no, I got out and work for this. I mean, how ignorant can a person be? He allowed you to do those things, to get certain things. Yeah. Uh, I was, guy was bragging the other day, man, I got me a brand new ride. I said, really? I said, let me ask you a question. What if you get sick and you can't pay for this brand new ride? Is that still your ride? Mm -hmm. He looked at me right funny. I never thought about it. I said, quit saying it's your ride. I said, thank yeah. God have blessed me with a new car. Amen. He has blessed me with a new home. Yes. Give him and, the glory. And the thing about it, people don't give God enough praise. Don't give God enough glory. Amen. For some of the, all the things, not some of them, all the things that he has done for you in your life. Even young folks. Uh, watching TV the other night, saw where this young kid got killed. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad. Gunned down. The enemy is busy. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be out in a gang-infested neighborhood to take a bullet. You can be driving down the freeway. The sitting in your home? Sitting in your home, matter of fact. You're right. The devil's busy. The, listen, Satan know his time is not long, and he is on the loose. His job is to rob, kill, steal, and destroy, and put every knot he can on top of your head. Yes, sir. And you just sit there and just take it. You know, oh, my God, my God. People get in your Bible and read your Bible and find yeah. out what hell really means. And I guarantee you, half of the two-thirds of the world will get saved right quick. <laughs> but the problem is they, they don't think when they leave here, they think it's, a, it's another world. You're right. It, it is another world. The devil going to have them a long pitchfork. He gonna have some fire burning on you. You're gonna be jumping and hollering, and you'll never be consumed. Now, could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? Hell is for real. Hell is for real. And people get ready. The judgment day is coming very soon. Let's play another quick song. My time is almost up. Let me make a couple announcements. Don't forget, you can catch this program. After we leave here, you click on rmcgospel.com. Pastor George Kraut, Word of Faith International Ministry. Hit replay, and you can kick us right here again. Let me let you listen to this other little song here. And that is absolutely true. All that God wants is yes. yes. I have another little portion of uh, lamentation before we close. So verse 39, Wherefore does a living man complain if a man for punishment of his sins? 
Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands unto God's in the heaven. And verse 42, we have transgression and we have rebelled and thou not uh, pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and pursued us. Thou hast slain thus in pity and thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us uh, the obscuring and refused the midst of his people. Now, what the Bible is telling us here again, we talk about God's faithfulness. And sometimes when we go through this living man always complaining and, 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 and your punishment, you're going to reap what you sow. In other words, whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. And sometimes you feel that God is putting too much on you. No, he won't put too much on you. He won't put no more on you than you can bear. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes we have sickness, and a lot of that sickness comes from your sins. If you think I'm kidding, you get out here and drink a gallon of rum every day. Man, you get cirrhosis or you get ulcers. Mm. Now, who, 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 who's the cause of that? You. You. You can't point your finger at nobody but you. And too often when people's going through that thing, I want you to ball your fist up. Come on, ball your fist up. Now, how many fingers looking back at you? Huh? Three. Yeah, it's three. Oh, three. If you, you ball your fist up and point it oh. at somebody, it's three of them looking back at you. Point your finger, oh. yeah. You point your finger at one living thing and look, you have three fingers pointing back at you. Yeah. <laughs> I never oh. thought of that one, huh? <laughs> I got a young engineer. He tickled to death. <laughs> Laron, he's just wonderful. Well, my time is just about up, but I, I thank you all for listening at this program. And you can catch me again next Tuesday, the same time from 5 to six and why don't we have a good time up in this place praise be to god praise it god. has been a blessing and I thank god i hope you have learned something from this program i hope your heart have been touched so god bless you until next tuesday <laughs> Yeah.